they are students of class 8a and 8b look at the topic and chapter economic policies of the british chapter number 9 the points number 1 decline of the traditional indian industries drain of wealth the reasons why drain occur role of lord dalhousie transport and communication first point decline of the traditional indian industries now question is why did indian traditional industries decline there were certain factors behind it indian traditional industries decline now what were the certain factors indian traditional industries decline number 1 the peasants and uh, number 1 you know the system was extremely beneficial the system of you know uh, trade with indian weavers was a system beneficial to the company the british east india company it had a direct control why was it beneficial to them because it had a direct control over the weavers the servants the traders and their servants would keep control over the indian weavers directly under such system moreover weaver did not have any right to take any extra advantage from there that means all advantages they would take but weavers did not have any independent rights to take any extra advantage and most as a result most of the weavers had to lease out their lands to landlords at a high interest rates to arrange for the extra money needed to provide the supplies besides some important places of india like karnataka and our state bengal what happened weavers deserted their villages and migrated to other places ultimately they refused to take loans and closed their workshops the company appointed paid servants now what were the works of the paid servants they supervised the weavers works and collected supplies the weavers were forced to sell their goods below the market price and were hired for their services below the prevailing wages naturally the company started Uh, uh, naturally, company took all advantages from them. Company started system of uh, uh, advance payments with the weavers. The weavers were given loans to purchase raw materials for their production. When once an order was placed, this made the weavers bound to the company because they did not get back their loan. The loans, whatever they, uh, the, whatever they lent from the money lenders. they were unable to get it back their loans as a result maximum weaver maximum numbers of weavers uh, would have to lose their agricultural lands also and some properties whatever they had they had to lose it only because of that reason there were there were some problems for the weavers artisans indian artisans indian weavers fail to be benefited with that very system but but the british traders as a result it resulted in decline of the traditional indian handicrafts traditional indian industries next point my next point drain of oil the british decided to established their control over the large market of india 
which is manufactured goods flooded the large market of India. The British realized that large quantities of British manufactured goods would help them to sell their goods throughout the country. That's why from the beginning the British needed good network of communication in India in the interest of themselves. They wanted to supply their productive goods from one place to another. And until they were unable to introduce a good network of railway system, railway communication and other communications, they were unable to get it advantages. So what advantages they got from England? In India, they decided to do it so in the interest of themselves. And for that reason, they decided to drain Indian wealth and money at the cost of Indian people. In order to make their country rich and prosperous, the policy of drain of, drain of wealth, you know, encourage Indian, encourage the Britishers to do it so in India, their colonies. It was Dada Bhai Nauraji, one of the most important early nationalists of India. He had expected the British to use her in an age of industrialization and enlightenment to India, but was disappointed with the way the colonial government ruled over the country. Dada Bhai Nauraji, as an early nationalist, expected from the Britishers that they would provide certain benefits to the Indian people. The benefits would be, would be given to Indian traders, Indian craftsmen, Indian weavers, Indian peasants and farmers. But far from doing it, they took all advantages. The amount of money, whatever they earn from Indian trades by supplying raw material, uh, by collecting, uh, you know, raw materials or by supplying finished products, by selling it, the amount of money, whatever they earn, they decided to drain it to their own country, England. That's why Dada Bhai Dauraji wrote the famous book Poverty and Un-British Rule in India. When Indian people were facing poverty, poverty was breaking the backbone of the nation. The British started draining Indian wealth to their country in order to make them rich and prosperous. Dada Bhai Nauruji as an early nationalist, as an early nationalist, due attention to the parliamentarians in the British House of Commons by mentioning it that India was a colony of the British, but the British had made it a place of inhuman practice, a place of humiliation, discrimination. The people of India, they had no expectation from them. What they expected from the Britishers? The Britishers, the Britishers destroyed it. The Britishers ruined all their hopes. The Britishers ruined all their jobs. Now they all had become jobless people. In spite of being Indians, they had no job. But the Britishers, simply they had established their colony in India. It was not their own country like England. But still, they were adapting the policy of repression and there was no economic concession for the peasants, farmers, weavers, artisans, craftsmen. Now why was it? Will it be accepted? It must be changed. 
the due attention to all the members of the House of Commons of England by explaining it. That's why he narrated, he wrote that very book, Poverty and Un-British Rule in India. And this book, you know, help the Indian peasants and farmers to be benefited with that very system because by reading the book, by feeling the miserable conditions of the peasants and farmers of India, they decided to give some concessions to Indian peasants, farmers and other, you know, class of people. This was primarily done, this was done primarily due to that very book, Poverty and Un-British Rule in India, where Dadabhai Nauruji wrote about the heavy exploitation of the Indian economy by the company officials. He wrote it. The drain occurred. There were various reasons behind it. Why was, what was the reason the drain occurred? Number one, emoluments and emoluments are for the salaried staff employed by the British to rule India. That means the rulers, the British East India Company appointed a number of, you know, number of uh, officials in the British administration, but the amount of uh, money they were to pay, the British decided to pay it at the cost of Indian revenues. Indian revenues were for the all-round development of the country. But the British did not want to spend that very amount of money for growth and for the growth and development of India, but to drain the wealth. They decided to pay salary from the collected amount of revenues and rest of the amount they sent it to the British headquarters in England. The cost of revenues that were collected and used to purchase Indian goods that were to be sent to Britain. Besides, unaccounted cost of, you know, raw materials like cotton and jute that were sent to the Britain, sent to Britain in the interest of their own factories and industries. Military expenditure also incurred military expenditure incurred by the British, the interest for the foreign debts of the East India Company, these all were done at the cost of Indian money, Indian wealth. And by doing it so, the British started draining Indian wealth for their own all-round development, but not the all-round development of our country, India. And what I was telling me, telling you earlier, the time when the British had established their trade in India and occupied many, many places of India to be the centers for their trade and commerce, they, they realized that a good network system of communication was very important to them in the interest of themselves so that it could serve their own purpose. So India had no modern means of communi communi transportation during the time when they were thinking it, do, thinking it to do so. That's why they introduced a good network system of transportation and communication by the end of the 19th century movement. Moreover, the horse carriages and carts which were there, they did not abolish it. These also were there. And with that very system, they introduced modern means of communication. Hence, it was necessary to construct railway lines, roads and bridges in India. This idea was initiated and highlighted by whom? 
by Governor General Lord Dalhousie. Lord Dalhousie raised question in the House of Commons that a good network of railway system and communication was very important, essential to India in the interest of the British East India Company. A number of roads, bridges, culverts, railway tracks should be immediately built up so that it must be started immediately and they were able to supply their productive goods, their, uh, you know, uh, goods produced from machines in different parts of India. Because India was not a small but large country because there were so many important cities of India to be occupied, uh, to be supplied with, to be given with the wrong, uh, given uh, India, the cities were very important to them and the productive goods, the, you know, uh, manuf British manufactured goods, British machine made goods should be, uh, should be supplied to the places. But how was it possible? Supplying of goods through, you know, horse uh, uh, carts or bullock carts was not possible. It was time consuming. That's why they should immediately establish a good network of railway system so that it could be sent uh, uh, as it could be sent very smoothly. It could be sent very quickly. And then the other the, the traders of that places could be benefited with that very system and the British. That's why the British, you know, established the railway line in India. The first railway line was established in India from Bombay to Thane in the year 1853. The first railway line in India was set up from Bombay to Thane in the year 1853. And the introduction of railways had its own benefits and impacts on India. Now what were the benefits and impacts? The railways were used to bring raw materials from all parts of the country to the ports and they were then shipped to Britain easily. And in a short period of that very time, it was done. So who were helpful for, who were helpful with that very system? The Britishers were helpful. The Britishers were helped. The Britishers were helpful with that very system. The railways were also used to send the finished goods. Finished goods coming from Britain to different interiors of our country. Places of political and administrative and military importance were linked through railways. So the remotest places in India also were brought under the British administration to railways. People of all religious Pets, religious beliefs and pets travel together by rail, irrespective of their caste and creed. Other than the railways, post and telegraph offices also were set up throughout India, which improved communication between the cities and the villages across the country. Almost all people became helpful with that very system. And it was due to that reason India during the British period, during the reign of British East India Company had a self-sufficient rural and agrarian economy. And as a result of it, the continuous oppression on the farmers, peasants, artisans, weavers, you know, led to many, many revolts because a number of revolutionaries were born. They utilized the railway system. They quickly reached to their, you know, uh, to their, you know, uh, 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 to their places from where they started the revolutionary wars against the British. 
So their nationalistic aspiration encouraged them to make a rebellion, revolt against the British because they realized that the British set up railway lines in India in the interest of themselves. So they should take its advantages also. That's why a number of Indian, uh, Indian uh, revolutionaries started their revolutionary activities by using the railway line, the railway communications and they could and only for that reason they could easily reach to their secret uh, places from where they started their revolutionary activities and they targeted killing British officials by reaching one place to another. They reached quickly and British officials and British police also followed their followed them, pursued them. But sometimes they were uh, they were caught and sometimes they are able to leave. Sometimes they are able to escape. The British could not arrest them, could not, uh, uh, could not catch them. So these were the utilities, these were the advantages and disadvantages of the railway communication in, uh, in India. But moreover, there is, no, there is no denying the fact that the British, the British East India Company were benef was benefited with that very system introduced for India, Indian, uh, India, their colony, and was able to uh, make another program for their all-round development in England, all-round development of England. They are they were not interested to uh, make development for our country India, but as I mentioned earlier, develop for their development for their own country England. That's why the policy of drain of wealth, which the British started following, gave them a comfortable position in India. And it is due to that reason, the people of India, they started their revolutionary wars to make them stop. Ultimately, it paved the way of the nationalist movement in India against the British up to this by your students. Thank you.